When I was in this diocese over 25 years ago, I was the vicar of a congregation called the Church of the New Covenant. We were also a very diverse congregation. Because we were di diverse, it, it was hard at times for us to be together as a Christian family. You know, it is actually easier to be with people only who are just like you. But as I said at the beginning, that is not what heaven looks like. Heaven will be filled with people from every tribe, tongue, people, language, and nation. So now is the time for us to learn to get along with people with whom we will be spending all eternity. And as your bishop, I am the bishop for all of you. So I am hopefully the next time I come going to be able to preach without an interpreter because I want to learn Spanish. <laughs> You see, I, I do not, I am not supposed to be a bishop for only English speakers. I'm supposed to be the bishop for all of his companions, no matter who you are. So everyone here, everyone here is equally important to me. And I am grateful that you are courageous enough to come and gather in this wonderful interracial, intercultural service. So the question is, what does it take to serve in this congregation in the spirit of Christ? La pregunta entonces es, ¿qué es lo que se necesita para poder servir en esta congregación en el Espíritu de Cristo? I would say the first thing is gratitude. La primera cosa es agradecimiento. You see, this morning, even today, when I got up, I was looking on my iPhone, looking at the news, and there was an article about a church in Kenya who had, that had been bombed. La primera cosa que él hizo esta mañana fue con su uh, teléfono, con su iPhone, y mirar las noticias. Y, y aprendió de que en Kenia, un lugar en África, uh, uh, hubo una bomba explotó en una iglesia. ¿Es el episcopo o el Es anglicana. Una iglesia anglicana, que eh, aquí la decimos episcopal, en otros países le dicen anglicana, pero es la misma cosa, más o menos. You see, this is happening all over the planet. Eso está ocurriendo sobre todo el planeta. I have friends who are Pakistani and they posted on Facebook a picture of their church burning. You see, so when I come to this service, I have to take a few minutes and consider that not everyone has this privilege. So I hope when you come here, you understand that many of your brothers and sisters suffer, and to be here is a privilege. Yo quiero que ustedes comprendan que muchas personas están sufriendo, muchos hermanos ustedes por todo el mundo están sufriendo, y es un privilegio que 
ustedes puedan estar aquí y rezando y orando y asistiendo a la misa todos juntos. You see, this may not be everything that you would want if it was all up to you, huh? Right? Si es de ustedes, por ustedes hacer de la decisión, quizás no es la decisión que ustedes quieran hacer. But you see, that's true for all of us. Isn't it right? Pero eso es verdad para todos nosotros, ¿no? And because that's the case, you see, all of us know, I hope, that there are things about us that other people like, and there are things about us that other people do not like, yes? Hay cosas de nosotros que hay gente que les gusta y otras cosas de nosotros que no les gusta a otras gentes. And that all of us are equally loved by God. Y que todos nosotros somos igualmente amados por Dios. And He sees things inside of us that cannot be naturally loved. In other words, He sees things about us that He does not like. <laughs> y Dios puede ver a, vernos a nosotros por dentro. Y debe haber cosas que a Él no les gusta que nosotros somos por dentro. But He loves us anyway. Pero nos ama de todas maneras. He does not say you have to be perfect to come and be a part of my church. In fact, he uses people who are very imperfect. Even look today at the gospel reading. When the angel came to Mary, he did not ask her, are you perfect in the sight of God? In the Evangelion, when the angel came to Mary, he did not ask her, Instead, he said, Mary, the Lord is with you. There was no comment about whether Mary was sinless or perfect or not. He was, the angel said, God is with you because he loves her. No hubo pregunta de que si ella era virgen o si tenía, si estaba sin pecado. Lo único que el ángel le dijo es que Dios te ama y Dios está contigo. Let that be a lesson to us. Eso es una lección para nosotros. God loves us regardless of who we are. Dios nos ama no importa quiénes somos. God calls us to follow Him regardless of who we are. Dios nos llama para que le sigamos no importa cómo seamos. God calls us to make a commitment to Him regardless of who we are. Dios nos llama para hacer un compromiso, no importa quiénes seamos nosotros. We do not deserve God's call or God's forgiveness. No merecemos el amor de Dios o su perdón. But He gives it to us anyway because He loves us so much. Pero nos lo da de todas maneras porque nos ama tanto. Every time I come into the presence of God, I know that I need to be forgiven. Cada vez que estoy en la presencia de Dios, sé que tengo que ser But I know that God will forgive me because He has already told me that He loves me. And this, God has said the same thing to you. It doesn't. It isn't because I'm a bishop. It's because I'm a Christian. God loves you and forgives you because he cares about you. Dios los perdona a ustedes y los ama a ustedes simplemente porque Dios es amor. Therefore, I can come to the presence of God just as I am and ask for his forgiveness and know that I will receive it. Por lo tanto, yo sé que puedo venir a la presencia de Dios y ser perdonado. So if God loves me even when I sin and will forgive me if I ask his forgiveness, should we not also love and forgive each other? Should we not also forgive each other? Yeah. No, not, I'm, I'm stuck on the first part. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I'm not perfect. That's all right. All right. See, if God, if God loves us just as we are, si Dios nos ama tal como somos, 
and forgives us when we ask him y nos le whether we deserve it or not si lo o no, should we not also love and forgive each other entonces, ¿no debemos perdonar y amarnos los unos a los otros? Even if they don't deserve it. Aunque no se nos merezca. Because that's how God treats us. Porque así es como Dios nos trata a nosotros. Even look at the reading today in Romans, the epistle reading. Mira la lectura de Romanos, de Pablo a los Romanos. He greets easily 50 people in this lesson. Él le dice los buenos días a todo el mundo, 50 personas en esta lección. Do you think they are all worthy of the greeting of the Apostle Paul? Of course not. They're just ordinary human beings like you and me. But Paul is demonstrating in this epistle his commitment to love them regardless. Today we are going to pray and confirm and pray for people, yes? So what are we praying for? They are, we are, let's, let's take this phrase right first. So what are they praying for? They are asking the Holy Spirit to fill them, yes? And I'm going to be praying for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you think the Holy Spirit is going to do in their lives? Two things. Number one, he will say yes to them and receive them as his sons and daughters. I'm going to make the sign of the cross on their forehead. That's God saying, you belong to me. Are they perfect? ¿Son perfectos? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> But you see, they don't have to be. Pero ven, no vea, no que ser If they're willing to give themselves to Christ, he is more than willing to receive them. But the other thing that the Holy Spirit will do is that he will help them to love other people. You see, many times we forget that the Holy Spirit wants to help us to love people. Nos olvidamos muchas veces de que el Espíritu Santo quiere ayudarnos a amar a otras personas. We just think the Holy Spirit is there to help get us to heaven. <laughs> Pensamos que el Espíritu Santo solamente está aquí para ayudarnos a llegar al cielo. But you see, to, for the Holy Spirit to be present means He causes us to love people differently. Para que el Espíritu Santo nos ayude, Él tiene que hacer lo que ayudarnos a amar a todas las personas. You can ask God and say, Lord, I don't love her. I don't love him. Help me to love them. Because you know, there are people in this congregation who are praying the very same thing about you. See, we also have things in us that other people do not like. Isn't that true? Not your head. Yeah, see? So all of us are in this together. There are things about us that are lovable. And there are things about us that are not lovable. But God still forgives all of us. He still loves all of us and forgives us and cares for us personally. So let us learn from the lesson of Mary in the Gospel. When the angel came to her and said, this is what God wants you to do, she said, be it unto me according to your word. 
I will do what you have said. Ella le dijo a la sea como tú quieras, como Dios quiera. Amén, amén, amén. So today, when we see them making their commitments to Christ, Así que hoy, cuando veamos a estos, esas personas hacer su compromiso con Dios, let us join in them, unámonos a ellos, and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us, y pidamos al Espíritu Santo que nos llene, and help us to serve Him together, y nos ayude a servirle a, a Él, and, and to love one another. Y whether we like them or not. Ya, si nos gusten, o no nos gusten. Whether they are like us or not. Ya, que sean, o no sean, como nosotros mismos. Let Holy Faith Church be a witness in Port St. Lucie. Permitan que la Iglesia de la Santa Fe sea un testigo en Port St. Lucie. As a family of people that love each other. Como una familia de personas que se aman los unos a los otros. Even though we do not look alike. No nos de Even though we may not speak the same language. No la misma Even though we might sing different songs. Even though we might like different liturgies. Nos liturgies we understand that God's call to us is to love each other. And to love God with all our hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.